In this video, we will be using separation of variables to determine the general solution of a differential equation. First, let's take a look at what is a general solution and what is a particular solution. The general solution of a differential equation might look something like this. y is equal to 3x squared minus x plus c. So we have a c at the end representing the constant of integration, which could be any number. But the particular solution of a differential equation might look something like y is equal to 3x squared minus x plus 5 or y is equal to 3x squared minus x minus 2, or y is equal to 3x squared minus x plus 1 half. So we have an actual number or an actual constant in there for c. In this video, we will focus on finding general solutions. So we will have a plus c at the end of our answers, or somewhere in our answers. When given a differential equation in the form dy dx is equal to f of x times g of y, we can find the general solution using separation of variables. What does this really mean? What is dy dx is equal to f of x times g of y? That just means that our differential equation dy dx is written in terms of two equations, two separate equations, an equation that includes x and an equation that includes y, and those would be multiplied together. So some examples of equations in that form dy dx is equal to f of x times g of y include dy dx is equal to 3x squared 6y. We have our function in terms of x and our function in terms of y, and they're being multiplied together. Alternatively, we could have dy dx is equal to 6y over x. And that one might not immediately look like this format, but we can rearrange this one. We can say that this one is equivalent to dy dx is equal to 6y times 1 over x. And now we have it written in that format of a function in terms of y times a function in terms of x. This is what we call a separable equation because we can separate the x and y. We could also look at dy dx is equal to y plus y times the cosine of 2x. In that case, we could separate those by saying dy dx is equal to y times 1 plus the cosine of 2x. And in that case, then we have our equation in terms of y times our equation in terms of x. So that would be another separable equation. So if we have equations in that form, if we have our differential equation in that format of f of x times g of y, we can use separation of variables to determine the general solution of that differential equation. These are the steps to do so. First, move all the terms with y to one side of the equation and all of the terms with x to the other, including the dy and the dx. Those should be separated. Then integrate both sides and don't forget to add your constant of integration. Don't forget the plus c and then isolate y. We will practice this with our next example. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to negative 3x. Our first step, since we are going to use separation of variables, is to move all the terms with y to one side and get all the terms with x to the other side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a dx so that all of my x's are on this side. In that case, I would get that dy is equal to negative 3x dx. Now all my y's are on the left and all my x's are on the right then integrate both sides. So we simply apply the integral symbol to the front of both sides. And this is really just a one. This is really just a one dy. Now we take the integral of both sides with respect to that particular variable. So if we're taking the integral of one with respect to y or one dy, that's going to be y. And then if we take the integral of negative 3x dx, that will be negative 3x squared over two using our power rule but we can't forget to add the constant of integration. Technically, when we do this, there is a constant of integration on both sides. So we can write that as y plus c1 is equal to negative 3x squared over 2 plus c2. And that lets us know that there is technically a constant on both sides there. However, if we take c2 and we subtract c1, a constant minus another constant is still just a constant. So we can skip to the step of doing y is equal to negative 3x squared over 2 plus c. That is an acceptable way to write it. In future examples, I will not write out the c1 and the c2. I will just skip to adding a constant on the right side of the equation. However, you should know that there is technically a constant on both sides, and we're just combining it into one because a constant is just an arbitrary number. The very last step is to isolate y. In this case, y is already isolated, so we just need to box our answer. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to 2x over y. The first thing we're going to do is move all the terms with y to the left side of the equation and all the terms with x to the right side. So first, let's multiply both sides by y. In that case, you would get y dy over dx is equal to 2x. 
Then I will multiply both sides by dx to get y dy is equal to 2x dx. Then integrate both sides. The integral of y dy will be y squared over 2, and the integral of 2x dx will be 2x squared over 2, and then we're going to add our constant of integration to the right side of the equation. Remember, there's technically one on both sides. However, we only need one in there, as we discussed in the previous example. Now we need to isolate y. So let's multiply that entire equation by 2. That would get us y squared is equal to 2x squared plus 2c. But remember, 2c, 2 times a constant, is still just a constant. So we'll have 2x squared plus still just a c. And then we will take the square root of both sides. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2x squared plus c. Do not forget to have that plus or minus on the beginning of your square root. That's very important. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dt is equal to e to the power of t minus y. In this case, we're going to have to do one additional step before we start rearranging things. We're going to rewrite e to the power of t minus y as e to the power of t over e to the power of y. We can do that using our exponent rules. So dy dt is equal to e to the t over e to the y. Now we have our function in terms of t and our function in terms of y. So now let's separate the variables. The e to the y, I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the y, and then I will get e to the y dy, and then multiply both sides by dt, and you'll get e to the t dt. Now if we take the integral of both sides, the integral of e to the y dy, well, e to the y is its own derivative, so e to the y is its own antiderivative as well. And then we have e to the t on this side plus our constant of integration. Now, if we're trying to isolate y, how do we cancel out having e to the power of something? Well, we simply take the natural log. So if we take the natural log of both sides, applying that natural log to both sides there, the natural log of e to the power of y is just y. The natural log and the e cancel. And then we will be left with the natural log of e to the power of t plus c on this side. And that will be our answer. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to 2yx plus yx squared. In this case, we're going to need to factor out something to get it to the point where we have two equations, one in terms of x and one in terms of y, being multiplied by one another. So let's rewrite dy dx. dy dx, I'm going to factor out a y. So then we have y, 2x plus x squared is what's left. Now we can start moving things around. First, I'm going to move the dx to this side. So I will have dy is equal to y times 2x plus x squared dx. Then I will divide both sides by y. And when you divide both sides by y, instead of having dy over y, what you can do is write it as 1 over y dy. That's going to make it a bit easier to integrate later. And then on this side, we just have 2x plus x squared dx. Now we take the integral of both sides. And this is why it was useful to write it as 1 over y dy. It's because we know that the integral of 1 over y dy will be the natural log of the absolute value of y. Natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to 2x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus c. Then how do we get rid of a natural log? Well, just like we got rid of the e by taking the natural log, we can get rid of the natural log by exponentiating everything and saying that's e to the power of this and e to the power of this. So on this side, the e and the natural log will cancel and we'll have the absolute value of y is equal to e to the power of x squared plus x cubed over 3 plus c. Now, using our exponent properties, we can rewrite this as the absolute value of y is equal to e to the power of x squared plus x cubed over 3 times e to the power of c. Because when we are adding exponents, we can break it apart into multiplication like that. Now, e to the power of a constant is just going to be a constant. So this right here, we can rewrite as c. c is an arbitrary number. So if we want to, we can say the absolute value of y is equal to c e to the power of x squared plus x cubed over 3. Now, how do we get rid of the absolute value? Well, when you take off the absolute value bars, you have to make this plus or minus. So plus or minus c e to the power of x squared plus x cubed over 3. 
Now, there is some debate over whether you should keep the plus or minus on there. Some people will keep the plus or minus on there, but some people will not because C, a constant, writing that C technically implies that it could be a positive or negative number. So if we just leave our answer as y is equal to ce to the power of x squared plus x cubed over 3, that is also technically correct because c could technically represent a negative number in there because it's just a constant. And constants can be negative or positive. So it just depends on how your teacher prefers you to write that, if they like you to keep the plus or minus on there or if they prefer that you just write it as a c. The College Board typically will just leave it as a C. When you're doing a multiple choice question, you'll just see it as a CE to the power of blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this will be our answer for this problem. And whether or not you need to do all this simplifying, like make turning this into a C and breaking these apart, that will be determined by what your answer choices look like. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 minus 4x over 3y. First, I will multiply both sides by 3y, and I will get 3y dy, and then if I were to multiply both sides by dx, I will get 1 minus 4x dx. Then, integrate both sides. The integral of 3y dy will be 3y squared over 2. That will be equal to x minus 4x squared over 2. And then if I go through and clean that up a little bit, I have 3 halves y squared is equal to x minus 2x squared. And I just forgot my constant of integration as well. So you need the plus c on the end there. Then I'm trying to isolate y. So I will multiply the entire equation by 2 thirds to cancel that out. Remember, 2 thirds times a constant is still just a constant. So that can stay as c. And then you will take the square root of both sides. Don't forget that it can be positive or negative. So we'll have plus or minus the square root of 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds x squared plus c. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to y over 5. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite, is rewrite this as 1 fifth y. And you will see y in just a moment. Now I'm going to divide both sides by y. So I would write that as 1 over y dy, not dy over y. I would write it as 1 over y dy, and then if I also multiply both sides by x, I would get 1 fifth dx. Then I would integrate both sides, and the reason I wrote it as 1 over y dy is because you know that the integral of 1 over y with respect to y will be the natural log of the absolute value of y. And then on this side, I left the 1 fifth over here because I wanted to have something besides 1 to actually integrate. So this will be 1 fifth x plus c. Now we work to isolate y. In order to get rid of this natural log here, we have to put a big e below there. So we have e to the power of the natural log of the absolute value of y, which that just simplifies into absolute value of y, is equal to e to the power of 1 fifth x plus c. Now, remember, when you see a plus c stuck on the end of e to the power of something, what you can do is you can split that into e to the power of 1 fifth x times e to the power of c. It's our exponent properties that allow us to do that. Because if we think back to our exponent properties from algebra 1 and algebra 2, if we have x to the power of a plus b, that's really x to the a times x to the b. So the absolute value of y is equal to all of that. And remember, e to the power of c, e to the power of a constant, is still just a constant. So we can rewrite this as the absolute value of y is equal to c e to the power of 1 fifth x. So e to the power of c, if that was like e to the power of 5, that's still just a constant. So we just leave that constant there. Then to cancel out the absolute value bars, we, we do y is equal to plus or minus c e to the power of 1 fifth x. However, since c, a constant, can already mean plus or minus, it's redundant to write that twice because a constant can already be positive or negative. So y is just equal to c e to the power of 1 fifth x. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy dx is equal to y squared times the sine of 2x. The first thing I'm going to do is move the y squared to the other side, and namely I'm going to divide by y squared. However, instead of writing dy over y squared, I'm going to write that as 1 over y squared dy. And then if I multiply both sides by dx, that gets me the sine of 2x times dx. Now I integrate both sides. For the left side, in order to make it easier to use the power rule, I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of y to the power of negative 2 dy. 
And on the right side, this is something that I'm going to need to use u substitution for. So if I come up here, I'm going to say let u be equal to 2x because I see that function of 2x stuck inside the sine function. If you want to review u substitution, I do have a separate video on that. Then we take the derivative of this small equation. So du dx is equal to 2. This means that du is equal to 2 dx and dx is equal to 1 half du. So now when I rewrite the integral, I will have the integral of the sine of u, but then instead of writing dx, I'll write 1 half du. Now I'm ready to actually do my integration on both sides. For this one, I will simply use the power rule. So this will be y to the power of negative 1, increasing that power by 1 over negative 1, is equal to, and then I can bring my coefficient of 1 half out to the front as a constant multiple. So 1 half times, and then what's the antiderivative of the sine of u? Well, that's negative cosine of u. Then I just add the c to the end. So this is really negative 1 over y is equal to negative 1 half times the cosine of, and then I can plug back in what I got for u, which was 2x, plus c. Now I need to isolate y. First, I'm going to multiply both sides by y to get that negative 1 is equal to y times negative 1 half the cosine of 2x plus c. And then I will divide both sides by negative 1 half cosine of 2x plus c. At this point, I have that y is equal to negative 1 over negative 1 half cosine of 2x plus c. If none of your answer choices look like this, you might have to do some rearranging. So what you could do is you could factor out a negative 1 from the top and bottom. So then you would get y is equal to negative 1 over negative 1 half times the cosine of 2x minus c. But remember, minus c minus a constant, that's the same thing as plus a constant, if the constant can be positive or negative anyways. And then you could cancel out the negatives and you could say y is equal to 1 over 1 half the cosine of 2x plus c, leaving that as a plus c because remember, constants can be positive or negative. So if you need to, that's how you could simplify your answer. Another potential thing that you might have to do is you could multiply everything by a 2 to cancel out this 1 half here. So it might also be written as y is equal to 2 over the cosine of 2x plus c, because 2 times a constant is still just a constant if you multiply every term in there by 2. So you might also see it written like that. How you simplify will be dictated by what your answer choices look like on the multiple choice section of the AP exam. The last thing I want to look at briefly is what if a differential equation is not separable? For instance, what if we have the differential equation dy dx is equal to x plus y? There's nothing we can divide or multiply both sides by, and if we look at this equation, this is not separable because we don't have a function in terms of x times a function in terms of y. We just have a function in terms of x plus a function in terms of y. So in this case, we would not be able to separate and we would not be able to use separation of variables to find that general solution. So what if we need to know what does that differential equation look like? Or how do we find that differential equation? Well, there's an answer that we've actually already covered, and that answer would be to use slope fields. We covered that in a previous video, in video 7.3 and 7.4. So in this case, you really would not be able to get a finite general solution in terms of y, but you could use a slope field to get an idea of what that equation actually looks like.